Um, my name is Mary Beth Nascenda. I am the program director for the Integrative Health Studies Department, uh, and I also an assistant professor. I've been at Maryland University of Integrative Health uh, for over eight years now. Uh, studied here, got my nutrition degree here as well, but um, have some deep roots as well in experience as a health system pharmacist. I've been a pharmacist for over 26 years now um, and have worked in hospital mostly, but have some experience, some diverse experience overseas as well. So um, what I'd love to do today is just share a bit about the programs that I, I manage and I uh, the students I'm working with in my program uh, and with you tonight and let you know a little bit about what this is all about. All right. So I think it's sometimes uh, important to know, you know, where are we starting from? And if you're here tonight, I have, a, I suspect that you might be interested in really improving patient experience and having, helping people, uh, you know, live their best lives. And I, we share that vision, we share that passion. Uh, and that's something that is uh, at the heart of everything that we do at, here at Maryland University of Integrative Health and something that uh, is, is part of our mission uh, in life that we want to find ways to improve healthcare and to make it more whole person and person-centered. So uh, that's uh, something I wanna just start with and, and kind of ground ourselves in. Uh, one of the things that is important is that this university is one of the few universities in the United States that's actually dedicated solely to integrative health and wellness. You know, that's that's our 100% of our focus. Um, our sole passion and top priority is actually improving and advancing the field of integrative health and wellness uh, for both our practitioners as well as, I, I believe, as well as our patients. So, Let's talk a little bit about our university. Uh, one of the things that uh, we offer is that we have a comprehensive array of academic programs in integrative health. And we also provide unique academic programs that are not offered by a lot of other universities. Um, our graduates gain the unique academic credentials needed to, for employment and success in a rapidly growing segment of the healthcare sector. Uh, we have deep expertise in integrative health and wellness and have proven track records uh, with our graduating practitioners, educators, and professionals uh, who have made a positive impact around the world. So the university is deeply rooted in a holistic philosophy. Our model for integrative health and wellness is grounded in whole person and relationship-centered approaches and being a healing presence in the world. Our programs and practices are evidence-informed and based in ancient wisdom and contemporary science. And it's something that really drew me to this university is that combination of honoring the tradition, but also really diving deep and, and looking at the science and becoming literate on the science. Uh, I see there's a question. So it's good morning. I was morning for you, Dr. Kamal. <laughs> good morning. Uh, really plant-based nutrition is your interest. That's great. I think that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, and maybe, maybe different options you might have to explore that even further with some of the work that you're already doing. Uh, so that's one of the things about my particular program is that it does cater to a lot of diversity uh, around different practice settings and honoring those diverse healing practices. And so I really uh, center my program around that because I find that that is so core to uh, a whole person care approach. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the university. Um, we actually started as a integrative health acupuncture clinic back in 1974. Um, and it, it, we evolved into a contemporary university. Uh, we've achieved the highest level of institutional accreditation in 2006 uh, and have become regionally accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. Then in 2013, we uh, achieved our university status with the Maryland Commission on Higher Education. And we've been offering graduate programs for more than 30 years now and have uh, offered online courses as well as programs 
since 2013. So we really dive deep in 2013 to really get skills, not just in uh, the, the content that we're teaching, but how we do it effectively in online learning. Uh, we also, uh, my particular program is 100% online. We'll talk about that a little bit. But I make, I try to make it as engaging as impossible. And we actually do a lot of group work. And so there's a lot of opportunities to connect and with each other and with your instructors. So let's talk a little bit about uh, other aspects of the university. Uh, we actually offer 22 academic programs as masters, as a couple doctoral degrees, as well as graduate certificates. Uh, we have over a thousand students who are currently enrolled uh, from across the U.S., but also internationally. We have students uh, in several different countries around the world, um, and it's exciting to get their perspectives uh, of healthcare from outside the United States to help us to maybe think of outside the box, think about ways we can improve um, the healthcare here in the United States. We have over 3,000 individuals who are have graduated from Maryland University of Integrative Health. And all, again, both here in the United States and across the country and across the world. And we provide, they provide rather affordable, high impact and high quality care in private practice settings. We have graduates in integrative group practices. We also have um, practitioners in conventional healthcare settings, including the Veterans Health Administration and other hospitals, as well as people who are working in mental health, addictions, pain, and rehabilitation centers, both in the community as well as in corporate settings. So uh, we have alumni out there doing things and making a difference all over in different sectors. So it's, that's exciting. We have 170 faculty that are active integrative health practitioners themselves, and their professional practices inform teaching. We bring it into our teaching. It's part of our curriculum, the work that we're doing um, in our own practices. Uh, through scholar, scholarly publications and presentations, both nationally and internationally, our faculty recognize, uh, are, are recognized as experts in their field. And our 15 to one student to faculty ratio helps to really build those relationships and those mentoring opportunities. And we, we actually as faculty enjoy that and look forward to that, that uh, close relationships that we can have and build uh, with our, our students. Uh, students, interns and professional practitioners provide compassionate and affordable healthcare through 20,000 plus clinic visits annually at our on-campus natural care center, which is also offering uh, virtual telehealth as well in many of our domains and disciplines. And so that's exciting a lot of the work they're doing. Um, there's also opportunities where our, our acupuncture students, for example, are working in different healthcare settings and community outreach programs as well, as well as our health promotion students. So lots of activity going out there in the, in the real world. Uh, that's connected in with our, our university's work. Um, we also have more than 30 educational research and clinical and outreach partnerships uh, that we, we nurture and we, we value highly. Uh, these are collaborations with other universities, health and wellness and medical providers, as well as businesses, government agencies, and also community organizations. So the term integrative health can be defined in a number of ways. And so I wanna make sure we take a moment to make sure that we're on the same page and what we mean by integrative health here at Maryland University of Integrative Health. Um, here we define this as a uh, healthcare approach that describes a holistic understanding of health and wellness. Um, it considers the physical, emotional, social and spiritual domains of health and wellness. It also considers a range of contributing factors, including how the environment affects us, how personal behaviors, how our relationships, and how even our genes can have an impact on our health and well-being. It's grounded in whole person and relationship-centered approaches that supports the collaboration between the patient and the healthcare team. Uh, it empowers individuals to become 
uh, informed to take personal responsibility and to tap into that inner resilience and to choose the best options that is right for them. Uh, it uses uh, and approaches that are Evans informed and tailored to the actual individual and their individual needs. So that gives you a little, hopefully, a foundation of what we're talking about when we're talking about an integrative health a healthcare model, which uh, may not look like you're used to out there um, in your own experiences in healthcare. So that's something that uh, is infused throughout our programs and throughout our coursework as well. So there's growing evidence actually and recognition of the effectiveness of integrative health um, and this, these approaches to help promote health, wellness and healing and to address many of society's public health concerns. Several of uh, medicine's leading accreditors actually are starting to realize that this as well, including the Joint Commission. Uh, we can look to the work of the American College of Physicians, US Veteran Health Administration, uh, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare, and the federal government's interagency task force on pain management. They're all looking towards these other tools, these ways of health, wealth, health and well-being, these ways of expanding our health uh, uh, offerings to individuals to ensure that they have the fullness of, um, of life and the fullness of care and, and, and focusing on that whole person. So there's also, because of all these other, these big name agencies, there's also a lot of growing number of other local and regional as well as national healthcare organizations that are looking to these models as well. How do we um, shift our healthcare focus uh, instead of on disease focus into one that focuses on nourishing health and well being? Now, the use of integrative health approaches does continue to show some significant growth, actually. Um, the National Health in uh, Interview Surveys that was conducted by the National Center for Health and Statistics of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. They indicated about a third of the U.S. adults and 11% of children ages 4 to 17 uh, use integrative health approaches. That, that's actually not the most current data. That's the most current data we have on this. Um, but in the reality, we can see uh, if we look at ex how people are paying out of pocket for uh, different services, we can see that that is rapidly growing still. Um, some more current data from 2017 to 2018, uh, we, we know that about 57.6% of adults that are ages 12 and 20 and over, sorry, um, report using a dietary supplement in the past 30 days. So that was uh, uh, some of the newer statistics. Uh, so it's definitely uh, something that the patients want, right? Um, and estimated by 59 million adults ages four years and over in the United States spend about $30 billion on complementary health approaches. And so in addition to the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health and the National Institute of Health um, and the National Center for Health Statistics, they're all showing in a recent study that about 53% of office-based physicians are actually recommending at least one complementary health approach uh, to their patients during a previous year. So it's definitely something uh, that is, uh, patients are demanding and they're growing. So definitely uh, of importance. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the program. Uh, what I'm excited to tell you about today. Um, so one of the things that uh, this particular uh, presentation is gonna be focused on is the two degrees that are in my department, which is integrative health studies. Uh, the first is a master's of arts degree, and the second is a post-baccalaureate certificate uh, in integrative health studies. And, and these are, um, I'm gonna share a little bit about what these are. These, it's important to note, they're non-clinical programs. So my particular programs uh, are not going to, at the end, give you a, a certificate or license to practice a particular modality. Um, my program is tailored to a couple different audiences and we'll talk about those different audiences, um, but it's going to be looking at the broader field of how do we uh, shift healthcare and, and create uh, healing um, 
communities and centers that are going to support a whole person approach to care. So these programs uh, serve the needs of multiple audiences, multiple students. And the first is they serve individuals who wish to gain a graduate level knowledge about integrative health as an introduction to the field. So maybe you don't have a, a license or a certificate or to practice yet, but you're interested in, in getting into the field and you want to learn a bit about it to see which path you're gonna take about which, which role uh, and, and which kind of uh, practice you might take if you're going to be a nutritionist or health and wellness coach or yoga therapist or some other modality, this program can introduce you to all of those um, and give you a, an idea of um, the roles that each one plays in, in the healthcare team. The second uh, audience is that uh, this focus on is those who are, want to enhance your current career um, in, as a healthcare practitioner or, or professional. Um, and so it informs the application of integrative health within your work and your organizations. And, and these include uh, a couple different groups. The first is those with a bachelor degree in a health-related field. Um, and there's a lot of uh, kind of ways to apply this, in, in especially if you're thinking about maybe managing a clinic uh, that is going to bring in other practitioners from uh, of diverse uh, different kinds of practitioners. That's one possibility. Um, there's also opportunities in research and writing uh, to promote and advocate for an integrative health approach. Now, the second group, though, is those who are already licensed healthcare practitioners, such as nurses, social workers, like doctors like myself, I mean, pharmacists like myself, sorry, um, behavioral health experts. Uh, you already have your, your license, you already have your practice, and these are going to focus on how you can incorporate these concepts of integrative health into those practices. Now, the third group are those who are the professionals who are supporting those healthcare practitioners in their work, the, the healthcare administrators, the managers, the policymakers, the advocates. You know, I, I really have a vision for this program. Uh, if we want to shift healthcare, we have to think about all the players in, who are needed in that process. And that includes uh, lawyers, and that includes, uh, I would say, even computer programmers to help us to navigate this new world of, um, of uh, technology and how that is interfacing with our own health well-being. So that's the third group. And then there's a fourth group. And the fourth group are those individuals who are uh, have a focus on health and science writing and communication, who are, who are going out there and getting the message out there about what it looks like and what is integrative health and what does it mean to have a whole person approach to care. And so these are professionals who have their own areas of expertise um, and are have greater understanding. This gives them a greater understanding of this field and the workplace of integrative health and how it can fold into their current work. So you can see that there's a lot of diversity, and that's one thing I love about my my program and the students in my program is that I've got nurses in the program, I've got educators in the program, and it just makes for an excellent opportunity to have some dialogue um, in a broader sense on how we're gonna make this a reality and how we're gonna see things change. So that's, a, that's something that I really value about the program. The program provides a solid grounding in a couple of things. The first is in an overarching uh, view of the principles and practices, the benefits of the application of integrative health. The second is it also provides a grounding in developing research literacy skills. We talked a little bit in the beginning about being evidence informed and how important that is in this uh, this work that we're doing to to come bring together that tradition, but also the be rooted in the evidence. And so we provide uh, a lot of support and guidance on what is um, building those research literacy skills. So when we are looking at the the research on integrative health or on complementary medicine, we have a, a good idea of how we can read that, how we can interpret it, how we can apply it to clinical practice. Uh, so there's a, a lot of work on that as well. Finally, the program in, provides some information on the models of blending complementary health approaches and conventional health care. And there's not just one model. It's, that's the exciting thing. There's a, a lot of people doing some exciting work out there. 
and it looks different in different settings and different communities. And so that's something that you have spent some time looking at as well. So here's the overlook, a little bit of overlook at the curriculum. These are the program level learning outcomes that you would be gaining uh, in the program. Uh, the curriculum and learning are guided by these learning outcomes. Um, and they focus on a couple of things that I already mentioned, but I'm going to spell out a little bit here. Uh, the first is on those foundational elements, uh, the, the application and the efficacy of the overarching field of integrative health, as well as specific practices within the field. So what does it look like? What are the principles? What are the philosophies? What are the practices look like? They also include uh, acquisition as a set of research literacy. So we spend some time developing those skills in the program um, to make you proficient and being able to communicate the why it's effective, why these approaches are effective and not just um, that you have that, that foundational knowledge and that ability to communicate that. So that's another uh, part of the learning outcomes in the program. Um, the program also makes the content immediately relevant to students by providing opportunities to actually consider incorporating this into your own practice. How do you incorporate these things you're learning into your practice? And that's something that we also um, want to make like a focal point of because it's not much use to learn these things if you can't actually bring them into your your day to day um, and your and improve your own work and your own experience. So. Um, that's something that's important to us as well. So a little bit about the two degrees. The Master's of Arts is comprised of 30 credits, and it can be done um, completely in about two years' time. Uh, students who can choose from a variety of electives that actually uh, look at different areas of concentration, and you can tailor this to serve your needs. And we'll talk a little bit about those ways, uh, the different electives that can help support you. Um, this is also completely online. It's important to know that. Uh, there's, a, on average, if you wanna get through it in two years, you're taking about six credits or two classes per trimester. Um, and that makes up the master's degree. The post-baccalaureate certificate is also 100% online and it can be can completed in about a year. Uh, so it's a total of 12 credits. And again, that's if you're averaging uh, six credits or two classes per trimester. Uh, we do have the ability to uh, tailor this a bit. Uh, I have students who are doing it in a bit longer than two years or a bit longer than the one year baccalaureate because they're working adults and they have to balance their work and their, their education. And so we do have ways and we are fully here to support you to make sure that it works within your schedule and so that you can achieve the goals you're trying to achieve. In, in a not so not so crazy where you're overwhelming yourself. So that's there's options there. So the coursework is divided in two main areas. The uh, post-baccalaureate certificate and the master's degree both have the foundational knowledge components. And so learning about the theory and the philosophies of the foundations of integrative health field but also the efficacy and effectiveness of integrative pra health practices, and then looking at the practice models and what's, what's happening out there in, in the workplace. Uh, the master's has about 18 credits of this, and the post-baccalaureate certificate has about 12 credits of this. Now, the master's has an additional 12 credits focused on electives, so focusing on tailoring and personalizing this for your own uh, work setting. Um, I think one of the We'll talk in the next slide about some of the electives in more detail, but one of the things that I think uh, a lot of practitioners are uh, coming to see is that they, they want to combine this with their health promotion uh, electives because this gives them a, a pathway in. I think you can get all but three credits uh, that you would need to be able to sit for the, the CHES exam, which is a, um, a, a certification for health promotion. So that gets you pretty close to being able to actually come away from this degree with an actual additional certificate. Um, you just need those three extra uh, additional credits. So there's a lot of possibilities and focusing on nutrition, herbal medicine. We have great teachers, amazing teachers in these programs. 
Um, you can also be focusing on uh, mind-body practices as well as whole medical systems. So if you're really interested in things like Ayurvedic medicine or, um, or Chinese medicine, Asian medicine, you can focus in on some of those aspects as well. Now, these electives won't give you enough to be a practitioner in these fields, but definitely gives you a lot of valuable insights and learning that will help you to, to achieve the, the goals that you're trying to, um, to work towards. So these are the uh, foundational courses in the program. Um, you can see that uh, we have our healing, becoming a healing presence is something that Maryland University of Integrative Health has developed um, and is focusing a lot of our energy on because it's something we feel is at the core to all practitioners work with patients. And so those in the master's degree will be taking the heat, becoming a healing presence. Um, both the master's and the post-baccalaureate certificate will take the survey of complementary health approaches. And that's a, a course that really explores all the different possible complementary health approaches that are out there. You get a, an exposure to them. You, you start looking at the, the evidence supporting them, but also considering the traditional roots of each of them as well. So there's that merging of the tradition and the science together in this particular course. And um, it's, it's one of my favorites. So I enjoy um, teaching and learning from each other in that particular course, because I think a lot of students bring their own uh, historical practices and historic, and maybe they have their own uh, experiences and complementary health approaches as well. So then there's the uh, complementary and integrative health interventions for common conditions. Both the post baccalaureate and the master's students take this, and this is when we start looking at you know what are what's the evidence supporting this? What is the evidence that shows that uh, you know there are uh, acupuncture, it works for low back pain. Why is that being recognized by even the biomedical practitioners now because of uh, the studies and the effectiveness of that? So that's when you'll start looking into those in more depth. The research 601 that comes actually before INH 610, but it's where you start learning those skills so you can actually have the research literacy to be able to make those uh, informed decisions and you get a, a deep dive into uh, research literacy. It's a great class because it's it's a relevant to practice and not just a statistics course. It's like really focused on uh, application to the clinician and to the practice. So that, that's a, an amazing course as well. The next one is uh, for both the post-baccalaureate certificate and the, uh, the, um, uh, the master's degree. Uh, is the integrative care models. And this is where we look at the different kind models out there. Who's doing what? And there's amazing work being done out there uh, across the United States. Really exciting work that's growing um, on all different diverse um, practice settings. And so you'll spend that course exploring that and looking at that. And then finally, the master's students will final, finish up after their electives with a seminar in integrative health studies. And that's where you get to apply all that you're learning to your own, to a problem or a solution or a practice, something that's going to be relevant to your work. And it's going to be very personalized and relevant to the work that you're doing. So these are the electives uh, offerings, and it's like a la carte. We work with you to help you decide what is going to best work for you. You don't have to pick them all in the same group. Um, if things uh, work in diverse, you know, pulling together for some diverse uh, different areas of concentration and focus, that's fine. Um, as I said, this is this middle one, the health promotion education is becoming an area of interest because it gets you really close to being uh, certified. You're just three credits away, away from being able to sit to that, for that CHES exam. And that allows you to actually have some credentialing. So if you're maybe not a uh, healthcare practitioner, but you're an educator, this might be a road, that, a, a path you might wanna take um, in order to get you to where you wanna go in your career. Um, it's also got a lot of amazing classes and, and really practical, um, how do you apply this all in real world client classes. 
Another one that I see a lot of students really resonate towards are some of the mind-body practices, uh, combining things like mindful eating and nourishment with the mindfulness and meditation and health uh, practices. And so uh, there's, oh, there's opportunities here for uh, tailoring this to make sure it meets your needs. And we're here to work with you and talk with you and vision with you or brainstorm with you to find the ones that's going to best fit for you. I do want to talk a little bit about the seminar course because this is another exciting uh, course and this is really where uh, the application of this all comes into play. Uh, you work on a real world challenge on your own and with mentorship and with dialogue with your classmates uh, where you develop a portfolio piece, something that you can actually use in your career, something that you could use towards your career. Um, to uh, start off your, your actual going from studying to application, right? Some of, some of the samples, it could be a, developing a white paper that's addressing some of the barriers and uh, how do you implement this in an integrative health practice that you might give to an administrator of your organization to convince them uh, of, about a particular path you want to introduce or an entrepreneurial idea that you want to bring into play. Um, it can be a business plan. Um, it can be uh, several students have developed mind body toolkits for their organizations where they have uh, critically evaluated the different kinds of mind body uh, approaches out there and brought it together in a package that would meet their unique organization's needs. Um, I'm trying to think. My students right now, uh, I had someone doing a research project last um, last um, spring, and they were doing, um, they were working respiratory therapy. And so they were finding um, an introduction of a mindfulness practice to their respiratory therapists to help with them dealing with the pandemic and what the, af the aftermaths of the pandemic. And so she was working on uh, creating a research study that she would be able to uh, bring to her her department and actually implement it and and help them as they navigated that because oftentimes a lot of the mindfulness studies were focused on the nurses and the doctors at the bedside but the respiratory therapists were at the bedside too and they needed some of that additional support as well and so she focused on that uh, my students right now they're in the beginning stages of this planning. They're doing their brainstorming right now. And so um, that some of the paths that they are thinking about are um, one is doing a uh, designing a curriculum for faculty to help uh, incoming first year students with navigating uh, the college life and, and focusing on well-being. Uh, and she's working on that. On the other one, I don't know exactly what her outcome is going to be yet, but she's working with uh, very much uh, her community, uh, looking at uh, those who are, um, are struggling with obesity. But what she wants to focus on is educating the practitioners about how to empower those patients. And so looking at those kind of components. So she's developing something along those lines. So it's really exciting, the diversity of uh, things that gets people create and work on uh, in the seminar course. And um, if you come and join us, I'd love to see um, what you come up with and what you think about, because I think this is how we're going to make change, one, one person at a time. And so I'm excited about that. So the career options, what do you do with this degree? Um, the graduates with a knowledge in integrative health have been steadily growing in conventional healthcare settings. Uh, we know that in 1999, only about 8% of hospitals um, in the U.S. offered integrative health therapies and services. Now, 2005, this rose to about 25% in hospitals, but 2005 is a long time ago, too. So we don't have a lot of good current statistics, but we do see a lot of organizations uh, making new efforts to in include broader options for patients because they're the patients are asking for it, right? In addition, we do know that about 42% of hospice care providers were offering healthcare services that are including complementary health approaches in 2012. Uh, my own career, if I can speak to that a bit, 
um, when I was uh, in biomedicine in the in the hospital setting. Uh, one of my entry points in is I just got my nutrition master's. I am uh, an herbalist at heart. I have my certificate in herbal medicine. And so I, I love herbalism. And I was working in my hospital's discharge clinic at that point. And we had a discharge clinic that had a doctor, a nurse educator, a social worker, and myself. I was definitely wearing multiple hats. I was often working with herbal medicine and nutrition counseling uh, with the clients and the patients. Um, but what I really appreciated in that setting and what I bring to this is that collaboration between the practitioners. I mean, sometimes, you know, the most powerful sessions is when the doctor and I were in the same room with the patient and we were having conversations. I mean, they, they were just, that's the way healthcare should be, right? That's the way we should be supporting each other and supporting our patients. Um, and one thing that came from that is the realization that, um, you know, hospitals, they want to find ways to help people get well and that it's going to affect their bottom line, right? If a patient is readmitted after 30 days, they're losing money. So ways that we can introduce uh, a broader level of health and to promote well-being, um, we can improve people's health overall. And so it is cost effective and, and hospitals are realizing that. And so they're starting to join this uh, vision of how do we expand um, healthcare to include uh, these diverse approaches. So um, there's hope for the future. I have hope for the future. So that's um, applications are this fall. So there's a ways to go, but we, if you are interested and want to apply, We'll engage you right away. <laughs> it's not like you have to wait till the fall um, to, to get excited about it. Well, there's things coming up, including, and I'm going to share with you in, in the next slide, um, one of the, the things that students do in the program, and there's going to be a new one coming up in the, um, in the um, spring. So if you want to, uh, I'm going to put in the chat my email because if you want to get on that mailing list to know about this uh, event, um, I will definitely keep you in the loop. So you can see what the students in the program are, are planning and, and, and getting ready to implement uh, this spring. Uh, and what they do every spring is they do a integrative health well webinar. Uh, so this is the webinar and I gave you a link here. Uh, you can um, click on the link, you'll get the slides later, or I can email the slides to you. Uh, this is a panel discussion that they brought together these practitioners, uh, and they asked them questions about uh, endometriosis and looking at, at the different ways to support a patient from diverse practices and diverse perspectives. So uh, we had a a nurse uh, who was a uh, practice mindfulness practices. We had an herbalist and we had uh, someone who was practicing Qigong and, and uh, more Asian uh, influenced um, health healing practices. She was also a massage therapist. So lots of great discussion. Uh, I can't tell you what this trimester's, uh, this spring's uh, topic is gonna be yet because they're still, they're in the middle of the brainstorming ideas uh, to find out what the topic's going to be, and they're working on that, but uh, we should know shortly, and we'll definitely send out uh, information for you so you can join us and see what it's all about. Uh, we also have a virtual open house that's coming up, and this is going to be on Monday, March 13th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, if you're interested, watch the MUH website or feel free to email me, and I'll keep you in the loop as soon as we get details. Uh, and I can share out that information when I, we get that. So I know there's a couple things in the chat, uh, the questions. So uh, if you have a question for me, you can either put it in the chat or in the questions answer. Okay, I see. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, please let me know. Is it Supe? Supe? Um, it says, can someone who lives in New York apply to this program? I received an email stating that um, our communications restrictions with people in New York. Yeah, I think your state currently um, has some restrictions. What I would re recommend 
is definitely reaching out to the admissions to get the real, the, you know, what's the latest, what's the latest status of that. Um, there are, um, each state puts regulations in place around online learning. And so it's related to the policies and, this, and the laws around each state and those can change. So I really would highly recommend reaching out to the admissions team um, and they can definitely um, help you out with that. All right, Jessica, uh, thanks for taking time to walk us through. Yeah, no problem. I'm excited to, that you came tonight. And you know, if you have questions, let me know. I love connecting. So even after this webinar, if you wanna email me and set up time just to brainstorm how this might look in your life, I am happy to do that. I, I enjoy doing that, I enjoy connecting. So uh, feel free to reach out.